To rebuild the calipers, we're going to need several tools to do the job. Um, some of them will be more for convenience and others will be probably the tools that the average you know, home mechanic is going to have in his toolbox. So, um, we're, you know, aside from the rebuild kit and the parts, which thanks to Atkins Rotary, um, these guys are phenomenal. If you guys have uh, are building a rotary or I think they have parts for other, other Mazdas, but um, these guys are awesome. They, they ship super fast and they pretty much always have all the parts I need for a fair price. So I did get a lot of my parts for this project from Atkins Rotary. They're not a sponsor, but I do buy a lot of my parts from them. So it's a great company. Please support them if you guys are, are doing a, a, a rotary or a Mazda build yourself. So I've got the rebuild kit, which essentially is all the, the bits and pieces for the, the piston and the emergency brake. And I'll open that and show you what's in there. I also have the, the kit of um, you know hardware for the bracket that the the, the brake pads ride in, as well as the, that mounts the caliper to the uh, hub. So I will be replacing the bleeder valves with speed bleeders. Uh, that'll just make life easier if we have to do uh, fluid when we have to do the brake bleeding and, and, and fluid flushes. Uh, you're going to need some various grease. And I'm going to go ahead and use some anti-seize on on some of the pieces that uh, um, you know that I, I'm, I'm worried that I had a difficult getting off originally. I'm going to go ahead and put some anti-seize on those to help make it easier to get off in the future if I need to. Probably need a set of various picks. Chances are this 90 degree pick is about the only one we will need, but I do have a collector here in case something pops up. Um, you know these snap ring flyers are probably they might work. Um, they, you know, there is no projection, so we, we might be able to reach down in there and get the snap ring out that's in, inside the caliper. But if not, I do have the, uh, the you know, the, the extended um, snap ring pliers, which, you know, can reach down in there. So these will make it easier, but I might be able to do it with these, but, you know, probably more available for most people than, than this set. Maybe need a magnet to fish out some washers and things that might fall down inside the calipers or, or building it. Um, this is going to be the caliper or the piston removal tool. I'll show you how that works, but the piston that is in the FD's rear brakes is actually a screw type um, piston. So this will help unscrew the, the piston or at least get it started for us. But I will see if, um, you know, once there's no more clearance to use this, then we'll probably have to switch to some needle nose pliers to finish getting it out if it's, if it's stuck. Um, and you know, basically to use this, it, it'll go onto a three eighths inch, uh, uh, ratchet. And then I just got one socket. We may need a couple others, but these will be useful for, for pressing in some of the gaskets and seals and things that you know, basically we'll put this over the seal and then tap it with a mallet if we need to. So, um, I'll have to get, I'll just, I'm just guessing on the size for right now, but that we'll need, we might need a couple of those. So this is what I'm going to use to get, uh, to get started on the rear caliper, but I'll clear this mess out and I'll show you what comes in the rebuild kit. So I've opened the kit so that we can see all that we have all the parts and for anybody that's doing this on their project car, um, there's the part number four for this uh, rebuild kit. So you basically you're getting all the dust boots, uh, retainer clips. These go on the bracket that mount the caliper to the car and I, I left the, the ones we already have on there while I'm painting. I just taped over the ends because they're still packed with grease. So um, we will have to get those replaced. These are for, these are the e-brake shields. So essentially I think this is, this is how you see the shield or this is how you see it while it's on the car. And essentially it's got a, I guess that's aluminum that presses down in there. So that, that's why we need the socket. So the socket will basically be used to, uh, so it looks like I'm gonna need to get a little bit bigger one. So basically you want one that'll be just, just as, just a little bit bigger than you know the, the the rubber part of that uh, seal so you know that way we're bearing down on the metal as we pre as we tap that back in so you've got two of those you have different assorted greases so if you, you don't have to have your own grease for this project but they provide um you know i think this is this is some sort of oil for the 
Um, I'm not sure what that's for, but these are basically, these are just, you know, you'll, we'll apply these to the pistons and, and whatnot. Wherever, wherever we're told to basically in the factory service manual, we'll apply grease. Um, and then you've got the O-rings that go down inside uh, the, the shaft of the piston anyway, and then some, some, some O-rings. So, um, and then you've got some caps that go onto uh, the bleeder valves and then I'm not 100% sure where these go, but I'm sure we'll, it goes down inside the, uh, where the piston comes out. So it looks like we have all the parts. And so I'm gonna go ahead and get started by uh, twisting out the, uh, the piston. I apologize for all the clicking noises in my previous uh, shot there. I, I, I didn't realize the, I was picking up so much background noise with my microphone. So I have switched microphones. So hopefully that, that resolves that issue. So um, this is, I think the you know driver side uh, cal rear caliper for my car, and I think the first thing I need to do is go ahead and get the fluid that's in there as much of the fluid as I can out. So I'll go ahead and remove this brake line and the bleeder screw, and then I'll collect any of the fluid that I have here in this uh, this tray. So to remove the brake line, it's a 12 millimeter. This one seems quite dry actually, so I'll go ahead and remove the, the bleeder screw, which is a eight millimeter. And obviously doing this while it's on the car would be much easier than trying to hold it, but um, for what I was trying to do, this was the best solution. So uh, that, now that that's loose, let's hopefully get some more fluid out. There we go. Now this one actually looks, uh, that fluid actually looks really clean. When I, when I took the other caliper apart uh, before I did this one, uh, the fluid that came out was, as you can kind of see, was milky and clunky and dirty and, and basically smelt of roadkill and motor oil. So um, there must have been an issue or some water trapped in that caliper. But this actually looks quite quite clear, like uh, like brake fluid should look. So um, hopefully that's a good sign that this one will be easier to deal with than the one I just did for the passenger side. On this one, it looks like the... Uh, the second washer for the banjo bolt is actually still, there we go, still attached there. Okay. All right, so this is a, the brakes on the RX-7 are a, a screw type caliper. So um, instead of just being a piston that moves in and out of the, the, the caliper, it, there's actually a threaded piece in there that, that facilitates that movement. So. Um, Essentially, to back this out, we need to unscrew the actual caliper um, from all that mechanism. So, the proper way to do that is with this uh, this caliper tool um, here. There's a few bucks from the auto parts store. Um, on the other on the passenger side brake, I did have to use this because the, there was a little more rust and, and crud inside that. So this definitely made that easy. Um, but I think for the most part, you should be able to use some needle nose pliers potentially. So um, essentially you find, uh, you, you know, this, this cube has various uh, patterns on it and you basically find the one that, you know, matches your situation the best. So for, for, for the one that I need to use, it's this one. I know my arm's in the way, but as it, as it, as it, uh, you'll see it move. As we go. 
and it's going to start getting tight because the the dust boot is getting is getting pretty taut. So so I'm going to switch over to the uh, needle nose pliers just to show you how how that can be done as well. You know, it takes a little more force to do it this way, and you, you probably actually damage the caliper a little bit doing it that way. So after you back it out, you'll get to a point where, you know, the, the caliper is, is visibly wobbly and, and I think that we've got it backed out pretty far. So um, the next step will probably be to go ahead and get that caliper out or pull the dust uh, boot off um, because there is so much rust down inside there. Uh, I, when I took the other one apart, they, it definitely tore. So this one's probably gonna do the same. Um, I might see if I could just slide the boot off over the body of the caliper without doing any damage. Yeah, I'm already fine seeing some rust in here, so hopefully there's not a big mess inside. So, you know, there's the there's the caliper. And at this point, yeah, okay, so it, it just popped out. So um, I should be able to just wiggle this out without getting fluid everywhere. But I'll go ahead and pull my pan over just in case. Yeah, so that's not too bad. Okay. Actually, there's there's hardly any fluid in there. I think we were able to get most of it drained out from the the bleeder bleeder location. I can definitely I can definitely see some rust in there um, down around the uh, you know where the the dust boot is so I am going to yeah that retainer ring in there is, is pretty rusty if I can find the edge of it right. seeing how I don't really care about re reusing this dust boot I will just use a some brute force and a screwdriver and a pick to get this um, get this clip out this ring it'd be, it'd be helpful to find where the two parts of the ring come together but it's so rusty it's hard to actually tell what's what There we go, I found it. So I'm just using my pick tool here and there's the ring. So now the dust dust boot should be able to come out but yeah it's pretty cruddy in there real rusty oh man that is really rusty um, just a quick tip I mean it's probably is pretty obvious for most people but you know anytime you're disassembling something you know either you know you could take photos with your phone or camera or just if you've got a good memory and just you know the orientation of some of these parts um, and some of them will be obvious, but you know, there's always like this one. I mean, there's an obvious way that it needs to go on, but you know, looking at it, you, you could sit there and stare, you know, which direction do I want to put this on? And essentially there's a lip here that this ring needs to sit inside. So that's always, that needs to go in there. But you know, sometimes these boots are, you know, the direction of movement is, you know, kind of confusing at times. So anyway, this one we're replacing anyway, but it's, it's pretty crowdy. Okay. All right, so 
This one is about as bad as the passenger side, but there's lots of lots of rust. Now it's not inside the bore of the actual caliper. It's probably more that was trapped around this, you know, moisture had gotten trapped around this, the dust boot while it was in there and sat against the iron and, and rusted it. So the next thing, seeing how I've got my pick tool out, I'm gonna go ahead and get this O-ring out. It's, uh, so it zooms in to hopefully you can see that, but of course with the rust, it makes it a little bit difficult, but basically right here is the O-ring that seals the, the piston to the caliper. So we're gonna pull this out. Oop. So now that we have the O-ring out, and I do think that the brakes had been rebuilt at some point in time. When I did the passenger side caliper, I noticed that there was some, uh, you know, sanding marks where someone had cleaned up the sides of the piston. So, um, you know, this, this O-ring is actually in okay shape. I'm gonna go ahead and replace it because I've got the kit, but, um, you know, it doesn't look like it's been deteriorated any uh, other than the, the corrosion that's around the outside there. The next thing we need to do is go ahead and get all the internal um, pieces out of the bore of the caliper here. And so um, I do have a set of extended snap ring pliers, which would probably be the recommended tool to use for this job. Um, I, I, did, uh, I do think that this is probably a more common type of snap ring pliers for most uh, mechanics, uh, garage mechanics. So um, you do um, basically want a snap set of snap ring pliers that have no projections because you won't be able to reach down in there and grab them. So um, I actually found that these are easier for this application than the extended ones. So it's very hard to get on camera, but down inside there, and mine's actually rotated, um, so it's going to be a little bit more difficult. So it might be hard to see, but um, you know, down in there is a snap ring that's kind of holding several pieces down uh, inside the bore. So uh, in my case, the the prongs for the snap ring are up here on the top, which might make it a little difficult using using this set of pliers. So let's see if I can reach in there and go ahead and get this snap ring out. couple pieces came out when those came out so what you essentially have inside the uh, cap down inside there is you've got the spring this sits over top of it and then the snap ring kind of holds all that down so uh, mine just all popped out when I when I grabbed the snap ring but um, but that's the order of the parts that are down inside there Again, it's very difficult to see. This is where you could you could probably get in there and tap them out, but a magnet will make this a little easier. There are a couple little special um, washers. So you've got this special shaped washer that was underneath the spring. And then yet again, there's a, another one that goes down the very bottom. So that guy. So now that we have all the parts out from inside, again, the order is basically, it's uh, that, that one has special grooves down inside um, that those will line up with. Um, and then this washer sits on top of that, followed by the spring. And then that piece, and then everything's held in place with the, the, the split ring. So now, if you're lucky, you should be able to reach in here and grab the center piece and just wiggle it back and forth, and uh, should pop out. But mine's mine's uh, mine's fairly stuck in there. So the trick to getting the, that that out at this point is to take the uh, take the caliper or the piston just carefully th thread it on a few few threads and then now we should have something a little easier to hold on to so I'm just gonna wrap a paper towel around
So for the first caliper, I was able to use the, the trick with the, uh, the piston, but you know, this one's being very stubborn and I don't want to risk uh, gouging or scratching the, uh, the sides of the piston. So uh, I'm just going to resort to using needle nose pliers and giving it a shake and it, it comes right out. So, uh, you know, basically this is what, uh, what's down in there and that's some very smelly goop. Um, looks like, I mean, that's several different types of, uh, of grease that had been packed and, and or um, some corrosion, but uh, I'm just going to wipe this off for the most part. Uh, and then we'll clean all this stuff up before we reassemble. But, um, but yeah, and there's a little O-ring that will pop, <clears throat> pop off. Actually, I'll go ahead and do it right now. So the rebuild kit has a new O-ring for this. So we'll go ahead and take this one off before we clean up the parts. So I'll set that over there in the parts. Okay, so now um, there's a little tiny, it's basically like a little rod that connects the e-brake mechanism, the parking brake mechanism to the that piece we just took out. So mine actually is probably packed in the grease that's stuck down in there. So um, we're gonna have to get that out before we can get the uh, the parking brake mechanism out. But I think it's just stuck in the in the grease. So I'll use my magnet and I'll see if I can just go ahead and get that out. Yeah, so of course it's all full of grease and nasty, but it looks like a pill. So we'll clean that, put that in the parts over here. So now we should be able to get the parking brake mechanism out. The easiest way to do this is initially is just to, just to pull it out. There's, there's really nothing holding that in there. And again, it's, it's filled with some sort of grease. So I'll try to wipe up as much as that as possible. Um, now there's, of course, it's probably going to, probably going to tear on this one because it's been on there forever and the other one tore when I was trying to take it off. But um, additionally, there's a, mine's very fused together, but there's like an aluminum, um, you know, it's, it's kind of like a, a housing that this uh, the rubber seal sits in and it's actually this little flange that's sticking out right here. Um, that's actually what that goes to. So on this one, I'll see if I can maybe tap it off with, screwdriver first so the other one broke when I was trying to take it off because it was it's pretty corroded but um, you know again I've got a new part to replace this but essentially this is the only piece that you have to re replace when you do the parking brake side of the brakes but um, so that'll end up going in the trash, but you basically just have this, um, this piece that does the actual, uh, it holds that little rod, that little pill shaped rod that we just took out. So I'll try to get out as much of this grease as I can. And then we'll put it over here to be cleaned. So now, um, there is a set of needle bearings a needle bearing down in here, and I'm not gonna remove that. Um, this one looks much, much better than the one that I did for the passenger side. All of this was corroded very badly, and I didn't wanna worry about messing up the needle bearing. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and just leave it. I think the factory service manual actually says to replace this, but um, you know they don't come with any of the kits, so I'm thinking that it's not, that it, you know, as long as you can make sure all the bearings work, um, which this one still seems to be in good shape. We'll repack that with grease, but um, so anyway, so now the next thing I need to do is go outside because there is a lot of crud that's gotten down in here. And I'm gonna blast this with some brake parts cleaner, basically get the inside of the, the bore of the piston, uh, spray down through the bleeder valve, and then spray through uh, the parking brake mechanism. Basically just flush it out as much of the, of the, uh, the brake fluid and the, and the rust and corrosion as I can. So I'm just gonna run outside and do that real quick uh, so it don't get spray all over the camera and then I'll come back once I've gotten this all cleaned up. So these are all the parts that I'm gonna have to reuse uh, to rebuild the brakes. Um, so now the goal is basically gonna be uh, just to get these nice and clean and, and clean up any issues and 
on, you know, get all the old grease and stuff out of all these uh, parts. Uh, but one of the bigger issues that I've got to deal with is the rust that's inside the, um, the caliper. Now, it really just is this outer ring, uh, you know, towards the exterior uh, where the uh, dust boot sits. So it's not down inside the, um, you know, the bore where the, the caliper uh, or the piston rides in and out of. But, uh, um, but this is pretty nasty. It's probably not as bad as the other side that I cleaned up just a little bit ago, but I will go ahead and um, get my rotary tool out and all the stuff that I've used before and try to get this as much of this cleaned out as I can so that when we go to put in the new dust boot, you know, this, this corrosion is actually creating like a thickness that uh, makes it hard to seat, um, you know, the parts. So um, I'll, I'll let this dry a little bit longer before I do that. Uh, basically all these parts really, you know, there's not too much rust. There's a little surface rust, uh, but I'll go ahead and get some degreaser and, um, and, and clean out some of this grease and clean all these parts up. And then the biggest thing probably out of all these parts is cleaning up the uh, piston, which this one isn't as bad as the other side, but there is some rust and corrosion. Not, I don't think it's this part necessarily that's got rust or corrosion. It's just, it's been transferred from the, uh, from the caliper, but uh, I do have some 4 aught steel wool, and we'll use some degreaser and just carefully try to you know buff this back to a, a nice nice polish. Um, you could go as far as using some you know rubbing compound or something like that, but or, um, but but I think the results from the 4 aught wool will be okay. It'll just take a little extra time to get some of this cleaned up. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and clean all these parts. To clean the parts, I'm just going to use some some simple green. It's uh, it's just what I've got on hand, and it seems to do the job. So um, I'm going to go ahead and get these parts cleaned up. Okay, so all the parts are, are degreased now. Um, these two have some rust on them that I want to get cleaned off. And this one actually has a little, um, you know, there's a gouge in this that has left a sharp edge. And I'm not sure if that's from a previous rebuild because it, you know, maybe looks like somebody had, you know, grabbed onto it potentially with some, uh, some pliers or something. But I'm going to file that down so that, it, you know, I don't think it'll cause an issue, but just in case there's not a sharp edge there. Um, that could get caught on something. So I'm gonna grab a file and I'm gonna file this down and then I'll use my steel wool to clean up these two parts. And I'm, I'm just gonna go very, very gently. I'm not really, not really looking to do anything but to take off that sharp edge. Okay, so now this is, uh, that's, there's no sharp edge and there's nothing, you know, before there was a, a piece of the metal was actually sticking up like a burr, but you know, so that's, that's clean now. So basically you spray a little bit of simple green on, on these parts and try to clean the rust off. Um, it will take a little bit of time cause you know, some of this is actually quite embedded and then I'll try to clean up all the surfaces to make it look uh, kind of new again. So after a few minutes of cleaning with uh, with the steel wool, um, you basically get it back to 
you know, there is some discoloration. I mean, it's not textured at all. I think, it, you know, it's probably just a little bit of discoloration, maybe a smidge of corrosion, but it feels completely smooth. And I'm not worried about that causing a, an issue with the seals, but, um, and maybe when I get my rotary tool out here in a second to clean up the caliper, I might get into some of these grooves just to get this nice and clean. But, you know, basically that's been, um, you know, scrubbed and cleaned and it's good to go. So I'm going to get all these parts out of the way because now that I've cleaned them, I don't want to really get them dirty again because the next step is going to create a lot of dirt uh, trying to clean out this caliper. So um, let me get things switched around here for a second and then I'll be right back. So I don't know how well that's going to show up on the camera, but basically, I, you know, you can see how how nasty and crody it is, you know, down inside here. And it's, it's pretty rough. Um, so I'm probably gonna use my tool here, my pick tool to clean around the insides of the edges of the corners. Um, just cause my rotary tool won't really pick up um, those areas very well. And so anyway, so I'm going to go ahead and go all the way around and, and do a lot of cleanup. It's a lot of what we did the other day. I'm gonna get the rotary tool, and, and you know, buzz a lot of this rust out. And then once I've done that, then I'll have to go back out and clean this all over again with some more brake cleaner. So I'm gonna get started on that. I'm gonna go ahead and put, uh, put you guys with some music and I'm gonna go get my um, respirator and my safety glasses on and we'll get this cleaned up. <laughs> 